What's this? This is um, a power step from AMP Research. How long have you been waiting for this release? Uh, we started trying to figure out how to get these basically as soon as we got the van because the step into the van is huge. Which was about nine months ago? Probably. That's the step. So what's the first step when you get something new to install? You cut up all the cardboard and you put it in the recycling bin. What's the second step? Get out your tools. Get to work. Read the instructions. So <clears throat> I totally lied. I said it was Sprintech that makes this kit, but it's uh, specialized applications, I guess. Um, so we have three sets of instructions, which is always good for when you want to make something nice and easy. So this is from AMP Research, and this is also from AMP Research. This tells you how to assemble the motors onto the linkages for the steps. This is just like a, this is what does the up and down motion, but this is what actually drives it. So you have to do this. It says before continuing the installation process. So then I think we do this and then we go to here and then this also came with it from specialized applications and basically these instructions show you how to install a magnetic switch in the door jam so that their system knows when it's open. This is an upright photo. Okay, so step one is uh, assembling this motor onto the linkage. So the assembly kind of looks like that. Okay, so this is not actually two sets of instructions. On closer inspection, they stapled the odd pages together in one set and the even pages together in another set. So I'm gonna fix that. The instructions are a little bit weird. To help me figure out what I'm doing, I attached this bracket loosely, which is supposed to happen in a later step. It looks like that bracket goes against the back face of this cross member that's right in front of the forward leaf spring mount. So if I go tight to that, then I can locate on this lower ridge. I have to install some nut certs and I'm pretty sure that they go into this face. The nut certs will go into here. That's not shown well in the instructions. So they do provide these nice little uh, templates which help to get you the correct hole spacing and the height. I think this is how it's supposed to go. You bend, this says bend down 90 degrees. And so I think that's supposed to sit against this face, the registers here, my tape's failing because it's dirty under here, and then that sets the height of these holes from this edge. Alright, so that's the rear passenger side motor linkage assembly installed. And then this linkage is on here just loose for now. Uh, that gets a nut cert installed up at the top later on. So now I'm going to do the front. The instructions say we're approximately 11 inches forward of a tab in unibody cross member. Which I think means this flange looks like it would land us in this space here. Which seems right. Here's the passenger side forward idler linkage assembly installed. I used the 11 inch dimension from the forward tab, forward edge of this flange, to the back edge of the drill template. And I marked and drilled the holes there. Uh, one thing I wanted to note was that I always put the nut certs in with Loctite. The bolts that I put into the nutsert afterwards that hold the bracket on uh, all get 
anti-seize. And so the next step that they have you do is to install the running board onto the brackets. I checked my dimension from the rear to the uh, mounting brackets, nine inches, and then I cinched down all the bolts. I had to modify this bracket just a little bit. See that top hole is slotted, and I had to extend the slot to the left just a little bit closer to the flange edge not a big deal but it'd be better if it uh if it didn't need to be opened up but the reason i think is because if you look at that cross member where that thing bolts up right there is a hole and that's where the hole and the end of the bracket wanted to be and I, at first I was like, sweet, I, can, I don't have to drill the hole, it's already there. But that hole is too big for a nut cert. Here's the front bracket installed. They give you a couple of washers to stack behind the bracket because it's hard to tell on camera right now, but there's the sheet metal that the bracket goes over is at two different levels so you just stick washers up here to fill that gap so installing the brackets on the driver's side is supposed to be the same i got the front one which is just the idler with no motor bolted on up here so the driver's side rear bracket is a little bit weird because there's this hard plastic tube right here Basically, it just pokes up into that hole in the frame and it terminates right there. So all you gotta do is just pull this guy out. Just pull straight down like that and push it out of the way. So you can drill the hole and install this bracket and then put the tube back afterwards. There's this grommet right near your transfer case if you're four wheel drive, but it's right underneath the driver's seat. It's this rubber boot. You just cut a zip tie off of there and then push this wire harness up through there and then you go upstairs. And so up here we are underneath the driver's seat. I just unbolted it and I tipped it back and it's just kind of resting there. So the grommet under the floor is about right here, straight down from here. So I just removed this nut and then this whole piece kind of tips up and that gives you enough to reach through this way and pull your wires out this way. This stud right here, it's number 11. That has constant 12 volt power supply. So I put the terminal loop end of the fused link of the power step harness onto that stud. Then while you've got this piece up, if you pull it just to the side a little bit, there's a chassis ground right there. Um, so I'm going to ground this harness with the black wire to that stud. And then just like the passenger side, once you've got all the brackets bolted on, you bolt the running board on to the brackets. After I made all the connections for the wire harness, I just used Velcro to stick the control box right here to the forward side of the driver's seat base. So because this is not very well documented for the VS30, I'd like to try to put that information out there in case anybody else is trying to do this as well. Um, I don't know what um, options matter. This van has power windows, which I think they all do. Um, and it has power adjustable seats. And the reason that I say that I'm not sure about these things is because this box is probably different. I don't have a lot of experience with them, so I don't really know. But what we're looking for is this bundle right here. There's a brown wire, a green wire, a blue wire, and a gray wire. And that harness, if you kind of look through all the tape here, those four wires go back. And if you peek through here, and if you pull out this grommet here, 
you can see those and they go to this latch and that's the harness that you need and so what I've done here is I just stuck a little pin in to back probe these and this wire is obviously not my finished product but this is connected to the purple wire from the power steps harness which is your passenger's door trigger wire so ultimately I'm just testing right now but when I stick it in the slot with the blue wire from the door latch it works so I'm going to tap into this a little bit more professionally but for those of you out there trying to install one of these this is the wire that you're looking for on the passenger side so good news on the driver side you're looking for the same thing now it's not in the same position but it is still a green connector with the same color of wires this is gray green brown and blue and the blue wire is your door open signal. All right, so here's a final look at the driver's door wiring situation. It doesn't look like much, but this is the purple wire with the black stripe. And then I bundled it up in the harness and they include some posi lock connectors, which is here bundled up. And I just cut this blue wire and stripped both ends and I inserted both of those pieces into one side of the connector and then the purple wire into the other side. Alright, so this is the magnet switch that's in the sliding door jam. Excuse my mess. And this is the location of the magnet on the sliding door. It's got to be like flush to this plastic trim edge if you want it to work. I just tuck the wires in behind this gasket and they come out this side and they snake all the way down and around and into the auxiliary battery box slash under the passenger seat compartment. There's a ground stud right there so one of your wires from the magnet switch goes to that ground the other connects to the purple wire from the power steps harness and then the third leg of that connection has to come out and it goes up I can't really show you but it's up here and then it comes inside the door and then it connects to the blue wire inside the passenger's door so the next thing you have to do is to install these little lights that will light up when the steps deploy it's pretty straightforward. There's just a two wire connection, positive, negative, and there's included heat shrink butt splices. The harness has two wires, black and a red, that comes out at each corner, and you just splice them in. We put one right here, which is about in the middle of the walkway because there's it's not really helpful if the light's way over here because we're never stepping over there because our fridge is in the way. This is kind of the path that I used. It comes up here and then it jumps over the exhaust heat shield and over the transfer case. There's a there's a factory cable there that I zip tied to which looks like I need one more zip tie on there. And then this is where we come out underneath the driver's seat and after you get everything situated just put another zip tie on there and cinch it down holds everything nice and nice 